This Learn the Electrics video is part two of a two part mini tech tip series about three phase supplies and their usage. In this video, we will look at how we get the voltages and what happens at the substation. We will look at three phase motors and how to change motor direction, and we will consider three phase distribution boards and how to get a single phase supply from a three phase source. Finally, we will touch on RMS voltages, this little expression that is always appearing on test meters. In part one, we said that there are two colour schemes in use for cables and that the old red, yellow and blue colours have been replaced with brown, black and grey for new installations. You will come across both colour codes in your work and you must become familiar with recognising both styles for your own safety. In this video, we will deliberately use both colour codes at different times. We can begin, as we should, at the substation, somewhere on the outskirts of the town or industrial estate. This is the point at which we begin to step down the high voltages of the distribution network into the more familiar 230 volts and 400 volts. These are the usable voltages for our domestic and industrial applications. At the substation, one set of the transformer windings are connected together in what is called a delta configuration and the other set into a star configuration as shown here. There will also be lots of metalwork in the transformer, what are called laminations, and these aid the electromagnetic transfer of energy between the transformer windings. This drawing is a schematic to make it easier for you and I to understand, but in reality, the windings will be very close together for good energy transfer. The delta side, shown on the left here, is the input side. It looks like a Greek delta shape. And this is where the overhead pylons will terminate. This is called the primary side of the transformer. On the right is the output side, the outgoing low voltages. This arrangement looks like a star, and this is the secondary side of the transformer. Looking at the output side, we now have a neutral, together with the three phases, and an earth. The substation is going to step down the voltage. That is to say, a high voltage is input to the transformer, and a lower voltage, a stepped down voltage, is output. Here, we have shown a 32,000 volt input, and a 400 and a 230 volt output. We can look now at the voltages on the output side. We will only show the secondary side of the transformer now, the output side, since this is the part that is of most interest to us. These are the cables that go to the houses, the shops and the factories. Notice that all three windings and the neutral and the earth are all connected at the same point. This is called the star point, the common point, and it is here that the neutral and earth are electrically and physically the same point. How the earth and neutral arrive at the property after they leave this point will determine if the system is TNS, TNCS or TT. If we measure from any phase to the neutral we will get 230 volts nominal. L1 to neutral, L2 to neutral, L3 to neutral, each will be 230 volts. A measurement between a phase and earth will be 230 volts also. Neutral to earth should always be zero volts. If we ignore the neutral and measure across two of the phases, we will have 400 volts. The voltage between any two phases, L1 to L2, L1 to L3, or L2 to L3, will always be 400 volts nominal in this system. The question then is, if a single phase is 230 volts, then why, across two phases, is it not 2 times 230, which is 460 volts? Look at the single phase waveform first. At some point, the waveform is at a maximum in the positive direction, what we call plus 230 volts above neutral. Then, the voltage falls until it is zero, equal to neutral. It continues to fall until it is at minus 230 volts below the neutral. 
and the cycle repeats up and down, up and down. The voltage in a single phase system is always referenced to neutral and can never be more than 230 volts from the neutral or reference point. Three phase is a little different. You'll remember from the part one video, the three phase waveforms can never have two phases at a maximum or minimum voltage at the same moment in time. If one is at a maximum or minimum, then the other two will be in the middle somewhere. A neutral is not part of this measurement. What we want to know now is, how far apart can any two of the phases be? At any instant in time, shown here by the two circles, what is the voltage difference between them? Let's find the voltage difference between the brown and black phases. We can see that the brown phase is at plus 230 volts, and we show this as the brown arrow below the waveforms. At the same moment, the black phase is at 170 volts in the opposite direction, minus 170 volts. We can show this as the black arrow, and because it is a minus voltage, it is drawn in the opposite direction to the brown. The actual voltage between the brown and black phase is now all of the brown arrow and all of the black arrow added together. 230 plus 170 is 400 volts. The voltage can never exceed 400 volts nominal because we can never have two maximums at the same instant in time. And if we move on by half a cycle, the brown is now at a minimum negative and the black is in the positive. Draw the arrows as before and what do we have? 170 plus 230 which is 400 volts again. Any two phases will always have a maximum phase to phase voltage of 400 volts. We will look briefly at three phase electric motor connections. Electric motors are the subject of a whole video in their own right but this part is important to understand whilst we are on the subject of three phase. A three phase electric motor is sometimes called a squirrel cage motor. Why? Well, the windings of the stator are formed around a cage structure that looks like a cage for a small pet. And in Victorian times, it was very popular to keep squirrels as pets, and these were kept in a cage that looked like the former of an electric motor. Hence, a squirrel cage motor. Well, that was a little bit of history for you, but let's move on. Inside a three-phase electric motor, we will have three windings that are not, at the moment, connected to each other. The end of each winding will be terminated at the motor connection block. Notice that the winding order is offset between the top of the block and the bottom. To connect the windings together, we can arrange the winding links on the block in different configurations as shown on the next slides. Here we have chosen a star configuration. The links have been arranged so that all three windings are connected together at one point and the phase connections, the cables, are on the opposite side of the block. In the delta configuration, the winding links are arranged across the block. Now, the windings are connected together in pairs. Care must be taken with which configuration you use. The wrong choice could damage the motor and this is discussed in more detail in our soon to be published motor video. This leads us on very nicely to the often asked question, how do we change the direction of rotation of a three phase motor? We can look at this very simply in this video. Let us assume that the motor manufacturer has designed the motor so that if the phases rise and fall in the order red, yellow, blue, shown here as left to right, then the motor will rotate clockwise. We can look at the diagram and see that the motor will follow the order red, yellow, blue, and the arrows move left to right, which we have said is a clockwise rotation. If we swap any two phases, in this case the red and yellow, our order is now yellow, red, blue. But if we look closely at the diagram, what have we got? The sequence of red, yellow, blue is still there, but now it is from right to left, the opposite direction. The motor will still follow red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, but now it rotates in the opposite direction. 
it rotates anti-clockwise. Swap any other two colours and it will change direction again. A very simple concept, remember it, it will make you look good on site. Another question concerns this abbreviation RMS. Why does it say RMS on my test meter? It is the root of the mean of the square of the voltage at certain instant moments of the waveform. Without getting too complicated, it is a mathematical method to compare the heating effect of AC and DC voltages. If a direct current or DC voltage takes two minutes to boil two litres of water, then what value of alternating current or AC voltage will boil the same two litres of water in exactly the same time? If we start with a 230 volt DC direct current, this voltage is constant. Because this is DC, it never changes, it is always 230 volts. An AC voltage, however, is going up and down, sometimes at a maximum, giving maximum heat, and sometimes at zero volts, giving no heat, and most of the time, somewhere in between. So how big does the maximum AC voltage need to be to compensate for the times that it is less than 230 volts, or even at zero? It has been shown that an AC voltage that peaks at 330 volts is the same as 230 volts DC. Therefore, our meters display this as 230 volts AC RMS to avoid confusion with the peak voltages. Your test meter is programmed to automatically display RMS values and we enter RMS values on all test certificates. Another question that we are often asked, how do we get a single phase supply from a three phase distribution board? Let's look at this. Here we have a very basic sketch of a three phase distribution board. On this board there are six three phase ways, three on the left and three on the right. Each way is a block of three phases shown here as brown, black and grey, L1, L2, L3. These phases, L1, L2 and L3, must always be kept electrically separated from each other. And we have shown the main switch that will turn off all the power to the board. There is also a neutral bar and an earth bar. The supply cable brings five conductors into the distribution board. The three phases, plus neutral, plus earth. And we can populate this board with either single phase circuit breakers or three phase circuit breakers as shown on the right hand side of the board. Our first task is to connect a three phase motor to the board. This is by means of a three phase linked circuit breaker. If one phase has an overload or overcurrent and disconnects then all three phases of that circuit will disconnect at the same time. This motor circuit does not require a neutral connection so none is supplied. Some three phase circuits will have 230 volt control gear and this means that a neutral connection is also required. Now we want to add a 230 volt single phase consumer unit to the distribution board. Perhaps this new consumer unit is supplying an office where only single phase is required. So what do we need? A single phase breaker to supply the new consumer unit which in this case has been connected to the brown phase. A feed from the single phase with the appropriate size cable for the load. A neutral and an earth. That is it. Think of a three pin plug. What has a three pin plug got? A single phase, a neutral and an earth. Let's now add another single phase circuit, perhaps for the vending machines in the new rest area. Again, we need a circuit breaker, a phase, a neutral and an earth. And we have connected the new breaker into the brown phase 2 on another way or block. This is wrong. This is bad practice. Whilst the regulations do not forbid this, good working practice tells us that we should always try and fill up a way or block of three before starting a second block. The reason for this is that if we have single phase breakers randomly spread around the distribution board, 
we may end up with no empty blocks of three when we need to install a new piece of three-phase equipment. Always try and work in threes. And a three-phase breaker should span the brown, black, grey in that order. Again, it is bad practice to have a three-phase breaker across, say, grey, brown, black. So, let's rearrange things. This is the vending machine correctly connected into the board and it leaves the next single phase way, the grey, free for another single phase circuit and the three phase blocks are free also. And now we can add a single phase circuit for the car park lights. This fits nicely into the empty grey space. In summary then, the substation will step down the high voltage from the national grid to usable low voltage supplies of 230 volts and 400 volts. The star point at the transformer is common to all three phases and neutral and earth. Neutral and earth are the same physical and electrical point zero volts at the substation. Measuring any phase to neutral is 230 volts and any phase to phase is 400 volts. Remember also that our test meters will measure in RMS voltages. A three-phase distribution board can supply three-phase equipment and single-phase equipment. Much three-phase equipment only requires three phases plus earth. But some three-phase equipment may require a neutral connection as well to create a 230 volt supply for ancillary equipment or control circuits. A single-phase circuit that is derived from a three-phase board will need a phase, a neutral and an earth. Never allow separate phases to be electrically in contact with each other. And swapping any two phases on a motor will cause the motor to reverse direction. And there we are. We hope that you enjoyed this mini-series on three-phase and that you have put more knowledge into your mental toolbox. If you missed part one or want to see it again, we will leave a link in the description to this video. Please click on subscribe below to have access to all of our videos and please press the notify button to be sure of not missing our next video. Subscribing also helps us too and we really do appreciate this. Tapping in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all of our videos at any time. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.